What's your name? Right, I've asked you enough times. Show me your designation card. Yes, you do. If you're not going to show me your designation I've card, how do I know if you've got powers under the Police Reform Act to I've stop me? You, what's your name? you may remember this video I uploaded in 2018, where I was accosted by a gaggle of Derbyshire plod for daring to challenge these two PCSOs who were gossiping on the street, ignoring a public order incident that was going on behind them. Instead of going after criminals, they chose to go after me. They should have chosen the criminals. Right, this guy, this guy had no powers to stop me. These two are just looking for trouble because they've got nothing better to do. Just with police officers. Who are you? He's a police officer. Stop with your ID card. You don't need to see my ID card. You see mine. I'm a police officer anyway. Listen, you do not need to see my ID card. I will talk to you in a three seconds. Mate, get your hands off me. I don't want to repeat the story as I've already uploaded several videos on the subject. However, the reason that this was worth pursuing is because that there are too many PCSOs like these who prey on the public's ignorance of what they can and cannot do. If no one is willing to challenge them when they overreach their powers, then what is the point in those powers in the first place? They might just as well do what they want, when they want, as no one is going to stand up to them. PCSOs do not have powers of detention other than when they're shaking down children for booze and fags. Even if a PCSO wants to issue you with a dispersal notice, as Lusick later claimed he did, they have no powers of stop. Issuing dispersal notices is not a coercive power and there is no offence of refusing to stop and accept one. The only crime is if you refuse to abide by one. As it turned out, Lusick had no power to make a dispersal because the written authority he required had expired 15 minutes earlier something I found out later by making a freedom of information request. As Lusick and all the officers involved in this debacle prove, there are no limits to how much police staff are willing to lie, cover up and perjure themselves for their colleagues. Both of these officers lied, making written statements that I'd sworn at them, despite admitting on the spot I had not. This officer lied about keeping me restrained, even though he was caught on video doing it, and Lusick lied about putting his hand on me. Don't put your hands on me. Don't put your hands on me and get in the way of me. What's your name? Take into account that all of this occurred around the same time that the Inspectorate of Constabularies reported that Derbyshire police were failing to record over 34% of all reported crime, including rape and violence. And yet here they are, not hesitating to dispatch two officers and two PCSOs on an emergency basis to deal with Lusick's desperate bid to exert an authority he doesn't possess. You won't, this isn't the last you live for me. Is it now? I hope not. You, you, honestly, I know you think you're really smug and clever now, but you're going to have to answer to your professional standards. I will, yeah. Now, initially, I had to wait six months to upload the incident to my channel, as well as to make a complaint because I knew if I didn't, they'd attempt to maliciously prosecute me for a phony public order offence, something that Derbyshire police have already tried and failed in the past. In fact, here is Lucic trying to get me prosecuted for a non-existent offence. As a statutory time limit for charging Section 5 offences is six months, once I sat that out, there was nothing that they could do to me after that, and I was free to make my complaint. Naturally, the police denied that they'd done anything wrong, and the IOPC routinely sided with the police, as they tend to do by default. So the next step was to sue them. When I initiated the claim against Derbyshire Police for assault, battery, false imprisonment, and interference with goods, it became clear very early on that they intended to drag me all the way to court, despite them having not the least hope of winning. So in the face of their defiance, I decided that suing them for compensation was not enough. In fact, I didn't want a single penny from them. All I wanted was the one thing that police officers never seem to give, and that is an admission that they were in the wrong. As I had my hands full around this time with the private prosecution of PC Mark Knights, who just so happened to be from Derbyshire Police, I asked solicitor Ian Gould if he would extract that admission of liability for me. Derbyshire Police continued to deny of wrongdoing and refused to settle, so we had no option but to issue court proceedings. They continued to bluff, 
constantly delaying the court hearing with the usual police excuses of holidays, sick leave, training, never anything to do with being busy tackling crime, of course, dragging it on for over a year. Finally, and just a few weeks before the court hearing, they rolled over and negotiated a settlement. I rejected their first offer on the basis that it didn't contain any admission of liability. It took months to crowbar it out of them. After we restated our commitment to seeing them in court, they rolled over and after years of obstructions, delays, denials and whitewashing, they finally admitted to wrongdoing. And here it is, that admission in full. And can I just point out the final twist of irony? Not only did Lusick face no disciplinary proceedings whatsoever as a result of this assault, Derbyshire Police decided to employ him as a fully warranted police constable. But their negligence didn't stop there because they've also given him a gun. Yep, PCSO Lusick, a man who by his own admission suffers paralysis of anxiety when asked to show his designation card, applied for a position as a firearms officer. It would be funny if it wasn't so scary. The compensation I did extract from Derbyshire Police I've ploughed straight back into the private prosecution fund that I've maintained to remove dangerous and corrupt police officers from our streets. And if you're wondering what's happened regarding these prosecutions, well, the answer is a great deal. The problem is I just can't say any more at this stage because I don't want to prejudice a case that has thus far taken three years to find its way to the higher court. Hopefully the results of that case will be in within the next six months. And on a closing note, I will admit I did afford myself one small luxury to celebrate my success of suing Derbyshire Police, and that was to have PCSO Lusick's image printed on a medium conducive to his style of policing. A toilet roll. And so now, for the first time in his career, he's going to get to perform a genuine emergency service. And I have to say, it's the first time I've ever bought toilet paper that already had shit on it. 